It looks like a scene from some apocalyptic movie where an unknown force has obliterated life on Earth. This was once virgin Sumatran rainforest. Environmental groups blame paper and palm oil companies for the destruction. 85% of Sumatra's forests are already gone, largely because forest has been replanted with palm oil and acacia trees. We're traveling to the village of Telukmeranti with Greenpeace. It's caught in the crosshairs of a fierce battle for the last bits of forest. Uh, Ushtar Maitar is a Greenpeace campaigner. If, when, if the forest is gone, it means also the livelihood will be gone also. That's why He's taking us to see some of the locals caught up in this complex struggle. We will see pa Yusuf. Mm -hmm. pa Yusuf is the one of the tribe leader here in Teluk Meranti. And he's the one also really want to keep the forest standing because he realized the forest is uh, very important for the local people. Assalamualaikum. Yusuf says he doesn't trust the company's motives. The forest is our ancestral inheritance, Yusuf sobs. The company he's talking about is Asia Pacific Resources, one of the world's biggest pulp and paper companies, and he feels helpless in the face of its power and resources. I am very angry towards the companies, Yusuf says. We can't do anything. We don't have power. We don't have an education. We don't have money. They have divided us. In June, community leaders wrote to Asia Pacific Resources asking the land be left for the sake of Teluk Meranti's grandchildren. But the company says it's bringing 20,000 jobs and sustainable development to the area. In a statement to CNN, Asia Pacific said it's committed to a balance of economic, social and environmental concerns underpinned by a strong investment in responsible management. The confrontation has set neighbors against each other, as we found out when we went to meet someone back in development. We were going to be conducting our interviews here, but the restaurant is fairly busy and we're already drawing quite a crowd. The issue is so controversial that the person we're going to be talking to, because he sided with the companies, wants to have our conversation in private. His name is Siam Suar, and he's a school teacher. The company has committed to developing plantations for us, for our future, that can be the foundation of our survival, he says, and they will build new public facilities we need. But Bushtar says the companies flatter to deceive. That kind of example I keep telling them, see, your neighbor is already gone, there for, uh, already, already give them forest, and they get nothing from the company. Greenpeace is among many environmental groups calling on the government to issue a moratorium on the plantation concessions. And the land around Teluk Meranti is important because its peat soil holds more carbon than anywhere else in the world. Greenpeace estimates that if this whole peninsula, some 700,000 hectares, became plantations, the carbon dioxide release would be the same as 1.67 billion transatlantic flights. Indonesian President Yudhoyono recently pledged to reduce emissions. And Indonesia could benefit from the growing market in carbon credits if it preserves its forests. In the meantime, the government is still granting logging permits, and the forest continues to shrink. Arwa Damon, CNN, Teluk Meranti, Indonesia.